Welcome to another episode of SpaceX in the News. I'm Kevin, and today we're gonna to start things off with some interesting Starship updates. Then we'll get into some Starlink developments, talk about new information concerning Elon's trip with Joe Rogan. Then we'll finish with today's honorable mention. Let's do it. All right, so back in the early spring, SpaceX lobbied the local government to place no drone signs along Highway 4 down there in Boca Chica. That road goes right by the Starship construction yard and launch pad. They did this because drone activity had drastically increased along with Starship's development, and it became a cause for concern. Well, as any aviator can tell you, these signs have some serious loopholes in their verbiage, but it is enough to keep most drone pilots grounded, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. However, a few days ago, I was on the phone with Lewis from Lab Padre, and he was talking to me about this new opportunity with a local wildlife agency. They're allowing him the opportunity to get his drone back up in the air with the intent of documenting the impact of SpaceX projects on the environment and community. Lab Padre's live feed was recently featured in a local news segment by ABC5 News, which is currently keeping tabs on the buyout situation between SpaceX and the pointers. And as many of you already know, they're Starship's next door neighbors. Well, SpaceX appraisers have been meeting exclusively with Ray and Maria and have given them a one week extension to their buyout terms. And at this time, SpaceX has yet to follow up with another offer. Don't be fooled. We're not fighting to stay here. We're fighting to find another place like this. And that is our God given American right. I spoke with Maria yesterday, and while the situation she finds herself in was unsolicited and unfortunate, she wants SpaceX to succeed in their future space endeavors like the rest of us do. But it's the elected officials with the deep pockets who are the ones that have shown nothing but contempt for the Boca residents. Elon straightened it out. He told me himself. He found Boca Chica. And however the Cameron County officials sold the Brownsville uh, constituents, the fact that they found Elon and brought him in, and that's why they had to have tax-deferred incentives to keep him here. And now they've got to keep him here by imminent domaining us, and we know that's why there was a closed-door meeting on Tuesday with the Cameron County Commissioner's Court. And, we, and then on Wednesday, they had a teleconference at 4 o'clock in the afternoon with the real estate agency, the appraisers, and SpaceX lawyers. SpaceX's plans to move their construction of their East Coast Starships to their new property on Kennedy Space Center grounds is well underway. Long John Silver, no association to the fast seafood restaurant that I know of, snapped a couple of pictures of this new locale and its structures, which includes compressors, material boxes, a crane, poop coffins, welding machines, spotlights, and support structures. SpaceX has plans to move Starship to KSC by the end of November. COO Glenn Shotwell spoke at the Association of the U.S. Army's annual conference, and Space News quoted her saying, we're talking to the Army about Starlink and Starship. And although she didn't get too specific, her potential plans are likely similar to the proposals made to the U.S. Air Force, which revolves around using Starlink as a reliable communications relay for the military, and Starship has access to space and fast cargo delivery around the globe. Last week, we unveiled SpaceX's plans to increase the number of Starlink satellites in their mega constellation from 12,000 to 30,000. Well, the space company has issued a statement regarding this Starlink steroid injection, saying that they are taking steps to responsibly scale the total network capacity and data density to meet the growth and users' anticipated needs. The next Starlink mission, Starlink 1, which is expected to lift off no later than November, will set a record for Falcon 9 reuse by launching the same Block 5 booster for a fourth time. Politico just uncovered that Elon's pot-smoking adventure on the Joe Rogan podcast cost the American taxpayer $5 million. This money was given to SpaceX by NASA to perform a safety review of the way SpaceX handles their operations, which included educating their employees and ensuring they are following the strict guidelines for federal contractors barring drug use. While marijuana is legal in California, where Elon smoked it, it is still illegal under federal law, which means smoking marijuana violates government security clearances. You might think this is an overreaction, and I get that, but my top secret security clearance just expired a couple years ago. And believe me, in order to get one of these things, you have to fill out a ton of paperwork, answer a lot of questions, make many promises, and wait nine solid months as a team of investigators travel to every place you've ever been, turn over every rock you've ever stepped on, just so you can get one. Apparently, the government deems that national security is important to our nation's well-being. But Boeing was also directed to do the same safety review, but it was not given any extra NASA funds for it. 
And sure, they could have probably raised a stink about it, but a solid point was made in this article that if they did raise a concern, Boeing could have been asked why their costs for commercial crew are so much higher than SpaceX's. Ha <laughs> ha, touche. Speaking of NASA, now it's time for today's honorable mention. NASA is pushing ahead with its goal to reach the moon, again, and Mars. They just showed the world the two new spacesuits they developed to be used on future space-based missions. The orange or orange U2 looking one will be used like a jumpsuit for ascent and descent flights to and from space. And the sumo suit will be used for EVAs around the space station and on the surface of the moon and Mars. It's a huge leap forward in functionality compared to what we have now. And some could argue a couple steps back in sex appeal for lack of a better term. But it's designed to allow the occupant to enter and exit the suit through the life support hatch on the back which will eventually allow the suit to connect to the exterior of a moon or Mars base and remain outside so that the dust or dirt doesn't get tracked inside, a problem the Apollo astronauts had to deal with. When the Crew Dragon capsule exploded back in April, I recommended that you guys check out the documentary entitled Moon Machines Lunar Lander because it goes over the toxicity of hypergolic fuels that are commonly used in rockets. Well, for spacesuits, if you haven't seen it yet, I couldn't recommend that documentary highly enough. It gives you a real in-depth look at how the spacesuit technology came to be. It's extremely fascinating and there's a link in the description. All right, really quick last thing. A lot of you over the last year or two have expressed interest or even begged me to release the build instructions for my Lego Falcon Heavy that you see in the back there. It was the first SpaceX Lego project to reach 10,000 supporters on Lego ideas and go in front of a Lego review board. However, Lego decided not to make it into an official set for whatever dumb reason. No hard feelings there, obviously. But now the instructions are finally available on my Patreon. You can access them for $1. Yes, I'm asking for $1. Dang you, capitalism. But considering it will probably cost you a couple hundred dollars to purchase the pieces, I wouldn't fuss over an extra buck, especially since I spent over $700 and 12 months to design it. And fair warning, this is not an easy build. Currently, the instructions suck because I suck with modeling on computers and there isn't even a convenient list of pieces. You don't have to buy the pieces yourself using bricklink.com or whatever method you choose. You know, I did attempt to have others render the instructions in the piece list for me, but they just never turned out to be reliable. So continue at your own risk, but if you do decide to pursue this build, have fun with it. Engineering is all about problem solving, and problem solving is fun. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for tuning in, and until the next one, Godspeed.